Jonah still. <clears throat> the book of Jonah in lesson nine. Does everybody have? No, no, that mine. You got yours yeah. stolen? Oh. Sorry. On the book. We are in lesson nine, and I'll bring uh, <clears throat> you up today if you like. You want to fill in the blanks? But we're ready to look at Roman numeral three today. All right, uh, Roman numeral one is an urgent matter. And letter A is preaching is God's answer. Preaching is God's answer. Did you need one? No. I have one. You got one? At home. At home. Oh. And then letter B is promptness is God's advice. Promptness is God's advice. And Jonah wasn't prompt. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was the opposite. Do you need one, dear? <clears throat> Roman numeral two is a useful minister. A useful minister. Letter A, a pliable <coughs> messenger. A pliable messenger. Pliability may be the most important ability. A pliable messenger. Would you say that any of these things describe Jonah thus far? No. Nope. And then let her be a plagiarized message. A plagiarized message. And that's where we are to begin with today. <coughs> plagiarized. That's to steal somebody else's material. You never did that. That's why you don't remember what you did. You're an honest person. All right, so chapter 3, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Rise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, preach unto it, the preaching that I bid thee. God does not have a problem with stuttering, but he uh, <clears throat> will repeat himself, because we have a lot of problems with hearing, listening, and obeying don't we? And yeah, my wife reminds me of that. Frequently, I have a problem. I'll take you home, Dad. All right. That sounded ominous. Yep. I'm for it now. All right, an unsavory message. An unsavory message. Maybe this is one of the reasons why Jonah didn't want to give the message, but he certainly did want this this message, this sermon, and the results to be fulfilled on the people of Nineveh. He hated them awfully. He wanted them to be destroyed. He wanted them to be destroyed. Aren't you glad that when... You were not saved yet. That those who wanted you to be destroyed, God didn't listen to them. Amen. 
but we use this to try and show you how great is the love of God. Amen. God's love is very, very great indeed that even the people of Nineveh were acceptable. Not only acceptable in his sight, but to be relished, pursued, a great deal of effort, worth a great deal of effort to reach them. Putting this in right perspective for us today, do you realize how much effort God puts into reaching people that are never going to be saved? Amen. And every time we try and pass out a track or witness to people and they refuse it and they won't have anything to do with it, <coughs> we are in the position that God is in. He's not willing that any should perish, but it all should come to repentance. And he sent his son to die on the cross to pay for the sins of all mankind, knowing that most of mankind would not avail themselves of the, of the cost, of the price, of the penalty that was paid for them. God knew that, and still, he wanted them to be saved. So, uh, this, um, this was the message that Jonah was given to preach, he did, and uh, the reason he didn't want to preach it to them was he wanted them to be destroyed. He didn't want them to hear the message, he didn't want to take any chance that they would be converted to be saved and be delivered from the terrible destruction. So, <clears throat> uh, anyway, God is not going to let them off the hook. God cares for the unsaved much more than the saved care for the unsaved. It would seem. And we need to keep, keep these lessons. We need to learn these lessons and keep these lessons and put them to use in our lives as well. So that our heart attitudes are, are matching what God's attitude is. <clears throat> and we need to love the lost as much as he does. And that is a big thing. All right. So uh, the second time God spoke to Jonah, Jonah was, at least this is the second time it's recorded. When uh, God told him to go to Nineveh, and he went in a different direction to Tarshish get on the ship. They got, maybe God spoke to him. He told him again, no, go to Nineveh. And he got on the ship and he was in the ocean and the storm came out. Maybe God spoke to him again, you got to go to Nineveh. And then when he got back to the seashore, the fish vomited him out. Uh, God maybe spoke to him, he spoke to him again. As we read here, this recorded for us now, that they is to go. <coughs> so, uh, I guess I shouldn't have said that because verse 1 of chapter 3 proves me wrong. The word of the Lord came into Jonah the second time. So God only spoke to him once before that. All right, so uh, we, keep, we need to keep putting ourselves in the scenario. Do you, when you read your Bibles, do you put yourself into the Bible, <clears throat> into the Bible stories, into the Bible lessons, into the Bible uh, precepts? Promises? We all do that. What about uh, commandments? What about conviction? We need we need to read our Bibles and we need to put ourselves into it. Put ourselves in that place. And don't sit here and don't sit and read our Bibles and say, hmm, sure wish so and so would read that. He really needs mm. to hear that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's no, not Bible first. study, folks. <laughs> and only. That's not Bible study. Amen. All right. So, <clears throat> so the Lord, the word Lord came to Jonah the second time, and uh, uh, so Jonah got the friendly got the end. He got the message from God. I'm not going to let this go until it gets done. That's what God was showing without saying it. I'm not going to let this go until it gets done, and I'm not going to let you go until you do it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. He had already been uh, in the throes of death several times up to this point and wanted to die. Throw me overboard and let me drown. Ready to go to Nineveh. God wasn't having any of it. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? 
Amen. No, he wasn't going to let him get away with that. So God wants, uh, he has a will for your life and mine, and he wants us to do that. And there's no room for excuses or refusal. <clears throat> uh, when, we, when we come to know the Lord as our Savior, we need to remember, the Bible says, His supper shall call in the name of who? The Lord shall be saved. So, if we're saved, it's because we called Him Lord when we became a Christian. And when you do that, you can't just put it in your pocket and forget it. Amen. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords in our lives and for eternity. So let's keep that in mind. He's not going to forget it. We shouldn't either. either. Alright, so <clears throat> Jonah, he goes to Nineveh and he uses a plagiarized message and so should we. Uh, this is where we left off last week. A plagiarized message. Normally this is a bad thing to do. In the case of God, it's not. He doesn't want us coming up with our own ideas, our own sermons, our own uh, doctrines. He doesn't need any help in that. Amen. <clears throat> the plan of salvation, the story of salvation, <clears throat> and the history of mankind has already been written by God. And we don't have the um, privilege, quote unquote, of trying to change that. So, uh, uh, Jonah preached a plagiarized message. He didn't come up with this on his own. He didn't spend hours studying as a prophet somewhere, and reading the writings of other prophets that were available to him at that time. Uh, he didn't think and rack his brain to come up with a, what, he, what, a, what message should I present. <clears throat> That, that, was, that was never an option, and still is not today. If we're going to preach for God, we're going to preach what God wants us preach, to preach. He has his own desired message concerning himself. Have you ever read, read something that somebody else wrote about you and they got things wrong? How did that make you feel? <clears throat> they write something about you, and you sit there. What? In the, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. That didn't happen to me. I didn't say that. <clears throat> I didn't feel that way. Blah 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 blah. We don't have the privilege of putting words in God's mouth in the Christian ministry. God puts His word in our mouths. <laughs> So to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And not our opinion about what the gospel is. We preach the gospel in its pure form Amen. as it was presented by God in the scriptures. That is our ministry. And we don't, we should not try and add to it, take away from it, or change it in any way whatsoever. We're to preach the gospel. We're to preach the word. Isn't that what Paul's advice to Timothy was just before he was beheaded? Be preaching the word. In season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Not with your own opinion or ideas about what you think of other people, but with the word of the living God. Be preaching the word of the Lord. All right, so uh, letter B on Roman numeral 2 is very important. And it's a lesson from the book of Jonah, and it's often overlooked. We're, not, we're supposed to plagiarize mercilessly. Normally, that would be wrong. When it comes to God's word, God's message, God's plan of salvation... It is not wrong. It's required. What is plagiarized? Take somebody else's words or thoughts and to uh, steal them for yourself for your own use. So, 
That's why when people write a news column or a book or something else, and they want to quote somebody else, they better quote somebody else and give credit to whoever said it. Is that yes. what happened to the professor at um, University of Pennsylvania, or was it MIT? I don't know. No. Oh, there's lots of it. Yeah, a lot of them, the Harvard. Yeah, exactly. The Harvard, uh, the person that runs Harvard. They investigated her and found out that she had plagiarized everything and doesn't even have a real doctorate. So. Well, that's carrying it to an extreme. <laughs> yeah, but that's exactly what plagiarism is. Is you know, it's taking down what you have taught. Like you write a book on on some the subject of God on something, and you publish it. So, I use it, and I write you know two or three pages out of it, but give you no credit. That's plagiarism. Mm. All right, so a plagiarized message. Now, Roman numeral three in our, in our uh, books here, uh, an unsavory message. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That was his sermon. No three points in a poem. <laughs> Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. It's not the, exactly the kind of message that wins friends and, and, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. encourages people. Uh, and uh, the message of the gospel was not intended or presented by God to make people feel good. It was written purposefully to make people feel bad. To bring conviction to us for our sins. So, the biggest, most popular uh, ministers, preachers, churches, to a large extent, they are in the condition they are because they have departed from the Word of God. They've tried to water down the message, give a feel-good feeling to people that listen to them, so they'll return and put more money in the offering plate but those that preach God's word as it was intended to be presented are going to suffer persecution for doing it. That is a Bible promise. So anybody that's doing God's work and is not being hit by a guy on a bicycle while you're doing it, he better check himself. But if he gets some persecution like that, Part of his response should be, ah, I'm doing it right. <laughs> I must be doing something right. <laughs> Otherwise, Satan wouldn't be after me. So we, in our lives, we need to recognize as Christians, the message that we preach is an unsavory message. It's not a feel-good message. It's not sugar-coated. It's not coated uh, in honey. We should not try and make it to be so. I've told you a number of times in the past that when we first went to Scotland as missionaries, we ran into some other people that were also there as missionaries. And uh, they claimed to be Christians, and they might have been. Uh, and they, they were trying to reach others around them with the message of the gospel. But uh, I started to become suspicious of them, the more contact I had with them, because uh, Scotland's a very hard place to win people to Jesus Christ. They're very, very set in their own religion that's been handed down for thousands of years. And, uh, you know, we learned that right from the start. It's a very difficult thing to get converts. But these people, they were seeing six, seven, eight, ten people every day get saved. And I tried not to think badly of them and guard my spirit and be, not be judgmental, but I also, some red flags were going off in my mind. And finally one of them uh, told me about it. He just led somebody to the Lord that morning. And I said, can you walk me through it? And I thought, maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe there's somehow I can improve it and I can have better results. But he walked me through it and come to find out 
he didn't, when he was going out and trying to lead people to Jesus Christ and all of the others in his group, and they were all from a place called the Florida Bible College, when they were doing this, they were saying nothing about repentance for mm. sin. Mm. No wonder they were getting all these responses. Yeah, I know right. the people of Scotland, Gerhardt does as well, and uh, they would say anything just to get you away from their door mm -hmm. and leave them alone. And uh, they would pray a prayer even or whatever. Uh, but uh, the message of the gospel is an unsavory message. If it is not unsavory, if we're not getting some bad reaction, I'm not saying we should pursue being persecuted or that we should enjoy it or that we should want to make people feel bad. But let's, let's get this clearly in our mind. Without a clear-cut repentance for Amen. sin, people cannot be saved. Amen. There's negative and positive sides of the gospel. The negative side is a repentance and a conviction of <clears throat> our sins. The positive side is to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as the payment for our sins. Amen. They both have to be there. And people don't want to hear that they're sinners. Amen. People don't want to be told that they're going to go to hell when they die Amen. unless they repent. Amen. But people need to hear that. Amen. And it is God, part of God's message. Preach unto them the preaching that I bid thee. You need to plagiarize God's message from the Bible totally and completely and not come up with our own ideas. So, uh, letter A under Roman numeral 3 is the wrath of God. The wrath of God. From what I've been, just been saying to you and emphasizing to you, can you look and see now that this message that Jonah preached to them, that's the only part of God's plan of salvation he gave them. The negative side. And this is what God told him to preach. He preached it reluctantly. He did not want them to respond. God did want them to respond. And they did respond. They did respond. And they repented. They repented. But they were never going to repent unless somebody came and told them about the wrath of God for sin. Yes? Jonathan, I was just coming up here thinking of that sermon by Jonathan Edwards, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. He mentioned hell ten times. Nobody does that except here. And supposedly he was preaching to Puritans. Mm. Mm. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. And, and they were supposed, supposed to know better. And they were screaming and tears and agony during and after that, at the end of that message for God to save them. Wow. Anyway, uh, uh, it's an unsavory message, the message of the gospel. It's unsavory to the lost people, but it is a savor of righteousness, the Bible also says, to those who will repent. Amen. Savor of righteousness. So it's an unsavory message because it mentions the wrath of God. And letter B, under Roman numeral 3, is the window of grace. The window of grace. And I've, all through this series of lessons, I've been, tried to repeatedly convince you about how terrible the Ninevites were, the Assyrians, the whole nation of Assyrians. They were horrible, horrible, horrible people in every sense of the word. And the things that they did to their enemies were just... Um, uh, recently I was reading an article uh, about what the Japanese did in World War II to Chinese people. Yeah. I had to put the book down. That, that, that was terrible, terrible indeed. Yes. That was the Ninevites. Wow. So, um, 
Maybe this is the reason that John, John didn't want them to be saved, didn't want them to hear the message of salvation, but God wanted them to hear. And uh, so, uh, when we're preaching for the Lord, that's Mike, Mike Blair. When we're preaching for the Lord, we need to preach about the wrath of the God, but we also need to preach about the window of grace. God gave them 40 days to repent. They had, they had lived quite a bit of their lives in a horrible manner and fashion with paganism, idolatry, and uh, awful things to other, other nations around them. Uh, but uh, in spite of that, the message from Jonah to them was, you're going to get completely destroyed, wiped out, but I'll give you 40 more days. Did they deserve 40 more days? They didn't no. deserve no. even the delay that Jonah gave them. They did not deserve that. No. No. They didn't deserve one single second of delay. I thought as, as long as you were in your camp, but in order to anybody, it should be given 40 days or the next day. The people that live in this world and are not saved, and they don't repent. Every day they're still alive. It's another gift from God. Yes. Mercy. Yes. God said they only had 40 days. I've heard of people that lived their whole lives refusing salvation and finally repented and were saved. Uh, so 40 days isn't an absolute number for everybody. But it's, a, it's a number that God gave them. It's a number that God gave them. And there is a number for everybody, too, now that you mention it. There's a number for every unsaved person in this world. It's appointed unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. So, a lot of people live their lives trying to be a mayor, trying to be the president, trying to be the prime minister, trying to uh, get riches and wealth and and uh, luxury yachts and so on and so forth. That's what they spend their lives doing. But God gave them their lives as an opportunity to repent and be saved. And that's the only reason God gave them life. And the ungodly people that are out in the world right now all around us, they're alive right now be only because God has given them that next breath. Amen. And it shows his great mercy to them. None of them deserve it. But God gives it to them. So there is a window of grace. We serve a God of grace. Yes. He's willing to save to the uttermost. Amen. All that come to God by him. So we need to preach this as part of our message as well. And so we need to be careful that we don't leave out the negative side in the plan of salvation. We need to be careful we don't leave out the positive side of salvation as well. Uh, to, uh, our sins are terrible and need to be repented of, but if we do, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And it's going to get better and better and better. Amen. Be unsaved and to stay in that condition is going to only get worse and worse and worse until yes. they go into eternal hell. So uh, this is the plan of salvation. How are we? What are we supposed to do? We need, we're supposed to preach the message that God has given for us to preach. Amen. Negative and positive. Uh, let's, uh, there's a nice little poem here in the teacher's book that I think you will enjoy. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Somebody has rewritten it this way. Jesus Christ came to our wall. Jesus Christ died for our fall. So that regardless of death and in spite of sin, through grace he might put us together again. I thought you would enjoy that. 
All right, our time's up for this morning, so let's bow our heads and close in prayer and get ready for our next service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to look into your word, and we thank you so much that somebody was willing to truthfully tell us to take the time to show us that our need to repent and to be saved. We thank you that you sent them. We thank you that you responded when we responded to you. We pray for, that we might be able to share it now with others around us. Bless the, the service today. Towards that end, especially with that which goes out on the internet. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen.